Welcome to the Fuel with Purpose podcast, brought to you by Excel, a mentoring network. I'm Jay Thompson, the founder of Excel, and I'll be your host today, uh, high above Savannah, Georgia, in the Sugar City studio. We have a good friend of Excel, Neil Wilson, the general manager of Van Baden Chevrolet, Savannah. Neil, good to have you in the studio, buddy. Thank you, Jay. Thank you for having me in today. Yeah, well, look, we know we've got a big weekend coming up. We know Georgia football starts up. My nice. Yellow Jackets are on their second game, and uh, we've got high school football in the community. So uh, I know we've got a lot of stuff going on, and I know you've got a, probably a full calendar going well, into it. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, again, thanks for having me, having me here. Uh, long time Savannah, matter of fact, my whole life. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and thank you for allowing Baden to be a part of your team and, and sponsor. We've had, we've enjoyed it uh, so far, and look forward to just a, a good future. Yeah, um, you know, I, I, I know I was supposed to talk a little bit about, about a bit about me, which is yeah, kind of hard because I'm not used to doing that. But <laughs> uh, four kids: I've got 24, 20, 20, and 13. Mm. Uh, all out of high school and college one, uh, but I got one still in, in uh, so Savannah Christian Middle School, eighth grade. So yeah, there you go. football, we do on Thursdays. Yeah. The eighth grade does on Thursdays. So we get our Friday fix on Thursdays. There you go. Uh, they got a good team this year, not to shout out, but they do. Uh, but yeah, um, just having fun. We work hard. We've had a great quarter. Uh, you know, all this craziness in the world right yeah. now. Um, we've been very blessed. Uh, our family, our work family, our regular family, just kept us busy, you know, from fixing, a lot of people got their vehicles fixed when they had time off and right, sure. it, so it filled our shops up. And, well, you know, I remember you telling me that y'all had a great quarter and I'm just like scratching my head thinking, my goodness, you know, thank, thank the Lord, you know, that, uh, that people are still out there in the community trying to take care of business, you know, and, and, and knocking it out. So we're grateful for the support of Dan Baden Chevrolet. Uh, I know we just launched our automotive mobile training unit uh, a couple of weeks back there at the dealership and so the best uh, unit right yeah yeah that's the best unit that's right man so uh what's funny is is i've got a i've got a family member who's got a junkyard in town and so we we were identifying some uh some some tools and some uh, rotors and things that we could use for the mobile training unit to teach these brakes and now uh you know i feel like we're about to uh, assemble that onto the trailer to start teaching uh you know brake and caliber uh, caliper work and uh so we're excited about that but uh i wish you could come to my driveway and see like my wife's like uh, all right jay we got to get this thing rolling and i know you guys are ready too as well so uh, uh we've got our fabricator who's uh drew's been coming on board and uh he's been helping us get these workstations in place that we can launch into the training we're hoping to really ramp up the training mid-october yeah so it's, it's uh, right around the corner it's right around the corner and uh, so we're real excited about that. We know we've got uh, Bethesda. We trained in Bethesda or there on the property yesterday with their students on the uh, construction trailer. They're already asking for the automotive trailer. I've got a principal out at uh, the, the alternative school in Effingham called Crossroads. His name's Brett. And he's already asking for Troy, who's on your team at Dan Baden Chevrolet to come on out and hang with us on the automotive trailer. So really, yeah. really excited to take the automotive Troy's trailer. Troy's excited as well. He's on the school board out there. That's so, right. Yeah, he's, he's, he wants to match the Baden and, and the schools out there, especially in this program. Yeah, so really when I heard that, that was this week. And so we're really excited about the three counties and where we're going to be able to take the automotive trailer and really engage students here specifically with Chatham County. Uh, we've got Jenkins High School ready to ramp things up there on campus. We've got Woodville Tompkins ready to ramp things up. I was just in a meeting yesterday with Park Place Outreach. I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with them. They were actually at the launch okay. uh, on uh, at the dealership a couple of weeks back. And uh, Shannon is real excited with us moving this automotive trailer over to their place on Henry Street. Start training up. I think they've got that's five awesome. to six young men. They're ready to start putting to work on that that mobile uh, training. That is that's great news. Well, so let's talk about this. You know, I know coming through here in Savannah, grew up in Savannah, living in Savannah. There's probably people that have come along in your life that have kind of helped point you in the right direction. And uh, really, we just would like everybody we bring in. We want to know if there's somebody that's kind of steered you in the right direction and kind of moved you forward on your journey of life. Well, you know, I've been there 25 years, got there when I was 19. I kind of stumbled in. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to aim to be in the car business. I was actually in college. Okay. And I needed a job working my way through college. And a friend of mine, his dad worked there as a manager. Uh, and he called one day and he's like, hey, we have an opening. You, you want to come over? And I talked to him. So I did. Went over there and it was actually in the service department. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I worked in, on boats. I, I worked in a marina for a okay. long time before that. Um, so I had a little bit of technical knowledge. But when it comes to working on cars, it 
wasn't that great? <laughs> and I could change the radio out. Yeah, right. All, all That's the, about my, my confidence. All, all, all the teenage stuff that we did, you know, mm-hmm. with our cars, so yeah. I could do that. And, uh, you know, I went to work there, and, you know, my goal was, was, uh, you know, <clears throat> I want to help. You know, it, was, it was a good job. I mean, I started learning really quickly. The managers that were there, I mean, they, they need production, right? So sure. they were they were like, if you will learn, we'll teach you. Okay. We'll, we'll give you we'll give you all the tools. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, so I did that for a couple of years, and I actually finished my college degree in working at a dealership. How about that? Yeah. So, and and I remember. So I, when you ask about mentors, I've had probably three distinct mentors at, at, at Baden that made the most impact to me. Uh, outside of the service, there were right. some really good service guys there, okay. uh, but. The three that, and, and you tell me to shut up if I'm going too long, yeah, but the, going, the, yeah, the three that, that, that made the most impact, well, one was, his name was Bruce Fulford. Uh, and Bruce was a, uh, uh, the, the, I guess he was the general manager at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, super, super car guy, you know, people person, great leader, great trainer. He mm-hmm. was just a, someone you wanted to follow. Uh, and I was talking to him one day, he came back and we were in the shop and he saw me working with my, with my books at the, you know, at the lunch table, because I had to do my homework. You were studying. I, I didn't have a choice. Lunch, I, I didn't yeah. have a choice. I had to test at night. So right. uh, I had to. And it was not by my choice. I wouldn't rather go to lunch. But Bruce, <laughs> one day, he, he stopped by. And he, he was going to get some. He said, uh, you know, what What are your plans after after college? And I looked at him. I said, uh, well, I plan on getting a real job. <laughs> never, no, I'll never forget it to this day. And he goes, oh, well, what's a real job? Uh-oh. And uh, I said, well, you know. Maybe like Bell South or I don't know, something like that. Maybe George Power. He's like, right. huh. He goes, okay. He goes, well, have you ever considered maybe staying in the automotive career? Mm. And I said, well, Bruce, no, I really haven't. And I think at that point, he and I got along. I took care of his customers. You know, I, I enjoyed working there. Uh, I tried to make it the best no matter what we were doing. Right. So I think he took to me in that capacity. And I think he took it under his wing to go, Hey, I'm gonna try to keep this guy in. Yeah. And, and I get that now because right. that's kind of my job. Train him up. You know, well, if you around. see somebody with some potential or at least uh, an understanding or something that you know that you'd like to have on your team, mm-hmm. you're gonna go after it. And I didn't get that then, but I definitely get that now. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, Bruce was a great inspiration. Uh, he was actually out of ECI Twin City, uh, played yeah. against Herschel. Yeah, it, it, right. He was he was famous for that in our in our little in our auto group. And uh, uh, so he was a huge football player, so he was very competitive. Right. Um, so he actually offered me a job in sales and reluctantly, because I didn't, you know, go to college to be a, someone who sold cars. Right, you know, sure. I wanted to go do a, a real job. A real job. And, uh, and quickly learned that uh, being in the sales was just being in people business. That's right. We're not in the car business. Mm. We're in the people business. Okay. Whether it's, you know, if you're providing a service or, or a product, it's 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 the people that, that make the difference. Well, let me share one of our mentoring strategies with Excel is that we want to move young men, when they come through the program, that they would become a partner with Excel and they would become a mentor within the mentoring strategy nice. of our organization. So it's the idea of Identifying leadership, being able to retain those students, those leaders, to be able to make a difference in the next generation. Gotcha. So that's perfect. Well, who's another person that uh, had a big I, impact? Well, I, and again, I don't, I, you know, I, I didn't know really what to expect yeah, yeah. today. Like, and we can edit, just so you know, all this is, we can edit it. So it's, oh, that's fine. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't mind if you just let it roll. I think it's more yeah, interesting. Right, right, but right. Uh, I guess two other people, and just to mention them, is one is our CEO, Wes Beaver, mm-hmm. who I've known for the same amount of time. And then, of course, Jane, Jane Baden Thatcher, which right. I call her Jane. She doesn't yeah. like me call by her, first, her full name all the time. Uh, but, but, but those two, in different ways, were very instrumental in my growth in, in, in the company. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jane, I, I got on her team. Uh, she became a dealer while I was working out from underneath her father. Okay. She started branching out to, to grow the company. So, you know, you've got to go do your own thing at your own store, basically. Right. Uh, so I was, I was lucky enough to be on her team. The funny part about that is, is that put me against her father's team. Uh-oh. Which had a lot more power and, right. and a, lot more, a lot more stamina and, right, and yeah. staying power. So, but long story short, uh, you know, watching her become the leader, you know, we were a four store group back then. We're now at 10 stores and growing oh, wow. uh, under her leadership. Yeah. So she's not only doubled, she's doubled in a half what we started. And, oh, wow. uh, you know, big shoes. Dan Baden was a man, he was a great leader, follower, dealer. I mean, mm. And he was just a great individual. Yeah. Uh, and he loved his people. He loved his employees. He loved his customers. 
So for her to follow that, man, that to me, that is true grit, and I've sure. always admired that. And uh, sometimes you don't see it now because right. we're at this level. Yeah. But I was one of the ones that was lucky enough to go through that process, and I mean, every step, and really exciting. Yeah. And, uh, and then Wes Beaver, our current CEO, uh, been with the company as long as I'm actually three or four months more than I have. So we're about the same time. Okay. Came in at a different capacity, but yeah. he and I, um, uh, as far as strategy on growing the business, he was integral in that growth process and, and helping bring ideas and stuff to the company. So watching all those dynamics right. and, and getting some advice and sometimes advice I may not want to hear, right? Yeah. Advice that I may have to give to someone. Uh, just, I would say it's probably the three top people in yeah. our company. So really three strong leaders that really took an interest in you as a younger individual, mm -hmm. wanted to grow you and groom you and prepare you for leadership That's correct. in the company. Yeah, yeah. that's fantastic. Well, listen, we know that uh, there are daily principles that guide us, right? Um, just if you're thinking off the top of your head, you know, when you get up and you, you engage the day, what is one principle that you really lean upon each day that will help you guide you through the day? Well, I'm a Christian, so I start there. Yeah. Um, not, nothing's going to happen if it's not, you know, forgotten Jesus. So I, yeah. I say my prayer in the morning. Uh, and a lot of times it's very similar. It's uh, you give me courage, give me strength, mm. and help me be a good leader. Uh, help carry me through the day. So that, that, that would be my number one. Uh, secondly is sometimes we have to remind ourselves why we're doing what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in the people business. We're there for profit. You know, we're, we're there to retain customers, to grow sure. our base, uh, to give the customer a great customer experience, to fix their vehicle if they need be. And mm -hmm. We also have a body shop, big parts department. But it's very simple. Um, I set goals uh, monthly, quarterly, yearly, and and I like I track those goals based. It's yeah, very yeah. simple. It's just a piece of paper. Right. I know where I'm at. I know where I need to be. So when I'm in, when I, and we've got 107 people on my campus, uh, so it gives me a lot of opportunity, a lot of different personalities. Um, so when I meet with the department heads that work with us, you know, I, I I like to say, here's where we're at. Here's where we're going. You know, how can I help you? What do we need to do? And then that it usually ends up in brainstorming or yeah. some version of us, you know, coming up with an idea or something to get. And, and really, you're trying to empower the other individual, right, to come on and to learn that principle, learn that system, right, right, and then to equip them. And that's what we were doing yesterday at Bethesda on campus at Bethesda. We had one of our mobile training units out there, and I'm always asking them, "What is what is one of your dreams? What do you dream about? What do you want to accomplish?" You know, and I think young men, I believe young men are dreamers and they're builders. They're always dreaming of something, a car to drive, right? right? Uh, something to build. They want to build a legacy to leave behind after they're gone, you know? But the idea is that what is a dream you want to accomplish and how do you set goals to accomplish that dream? And that's what we teach in our curriculum. Is this an idea of goal setting to accomplish dreams? And it's usually this idea of daily goals that accomplish weekly objectives which help you accomplish this annual dream. That hundred percent. You know? And then you know, not to, to to if I don't hit a goal or an objective, I just change it. Yeah. We're gonna hit it. We'll hit it. Yeah. We didn't hit it the timeline we wanted to. Right. But now we and so I guess I guess I've been fortunate that I've always thought that way and, and, and which unfortunately will let, never let me get to a finish line. Mm -hmm. The finish line will be you just kind of keep moving. Yeah, the finish know. line will be in the ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's good. But I enjoy doing it. So it is really it, good. Well, yeah. well, listen, you were just kind of talking about mentoring moments, right? When you're teaching uh, somebody about setting those goals and working, working with you to, to, to accomplish goals. Talk to us about a mentoring moment that may have just recently happened. Uh, you know, I feel like, you know, even myself, as we've been working towards this automotive training unit, you know, that you've been helping me work through through some goals and we're setting goals together to be able to launch this mobile training unit. Even now, I'm thinking about, okay, we still got these work workstations in the mobile training unit to, you know, to, uh, to prepare so that we can launch that trailer into the school in October, you know. Well, back to my previous comment, that was pre-COVID. All yeah, my right, goals right. and objectives <laughs> kind of got stretched out a little bit, which right. is fine. Sure. We, we, we thrive in chaos in our business. Uh, but I, I guess if I had one moment, and this is not recent, this is a, this is kind of a famous moment for me. And Jane, I hope you don't mind if I mention on the, on the, the uh, podcast, but most people don't know the lineage, you know, when a, when a, uh, a business owner passes their their legacy down to their children to, mm -hmm. to grow and to, to, to you know, flourish. 
Uh, that's a big. That's those are big shoes to fill. Sure. Uh, and and I mentioned earlier that we we started a dealership out on Highway 17. It was called Coastal Chevrolet. It was, right. it was actually Dan yeah. Baden uh, of Highway 17, mm-hmm. Highway 17 back then, Truckland or something. Uh, and then we quickly turned it to Coastal Chevrolet. Right. Um, but one of the first meetings I remember having with Jane, where it wasn't, you know, with the rest of the group, it was her and just a select few individuals that were going to be operating a store. And she looked at me and we did our meeting and our projections and this and that and what we were what we were hoping to achieve as far as financially and volume. But she ended the meeting and she goes, let me let me leave you with this one statement. She goes, do not make me borrow money from my father. Woo. Yeah. And I remember that to this day because I, it, it didn't, you know, in my agenda, in my mind, I was like, all right, here's what we got to do. You know, mm-hmm. this is important. We got to hit all this. But the number one important thing to her was right. not as much as dad for any money. So, right, sure. and, and we never did. No, yeah, yeah. So that, that and I always took pride in, in, you know, looking at what someone above me has to deal with, whether it be a, and fa- family business is tough. Mm-hmm. You know, the expectations are there sure. and, and, and living up to them. So yeah. watching that, it was it was like, I was like, wow, that's that's powerful to me. Right. That's a good. So every time I did made a decision, I would always think, all right, is this going to, are we going to end up having to borrow money from Mr. Vade, which we didn't want to do. <laughs> so I'm proud to say we did not and we did right. very well. Well, listen, we're, we're excited for the mobile training unit, this automotive training unit, uh, to have it on the road. Uh, I know we're storing it at the uh, dealership, and uh, I'm always excited to to roll up in the truck, you know, and to represent. In fact, every time I'm driving the truck, I'm thinking, okay, I'm representing more than just Jay or Excel. We're representing Vaden, you know, it's a Dan Vaden Chevrolet. So, you know, um, what's funny is my, you know, I'm driving, I'm leaving Bethesda yesterday. I'm coming down Whitfield, and I'm getting a phone call, and my cousin just passed me, and he's like, man, that truck looks good, you know. And so we're excited and we're grateful for just the generosity, you know, of Jane and the team and the company, you know, to put us in a truck that's going to pull these mobile training units and then to, to outfit the automotive trailer, you know, to go on the road, to teach automotive work, to benefit the Vaden team. I think it's a two-way street. I mean, right now, is, there's no secret that most schools are not focused on the technical part of, of teenage growth, right? right. Um, they all have an iPhone or an iPad or, mm-hmm. or something, which coincidentally is now part of our world. Not, none of our technicians start off with a wrench. Mm. It's a laptop and a lot of data. I mean, we actually plug right into the factory. So to be able to get out there and let the kids know in some schools that don't have those resources that, hey, there's a and, 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 and technicians do very well financially. Right. Sure. Um, but it, there's there's a growth process they need to go through to get them there. Yeah. So us matching and hopefully finding and giving people a path to that is that's a that's an awesome thing to do. Well, we're grateful for that path to be able to move into that. So, well, listen, you know, on our last uh, question, you know, when we think about workplace impact, you know, um, you know, share with us one thing that you've noticed uh, in the workforce where you're able to uh, kind of prepare us and the students that we'll be working with to, to be ready for the workforce? You know, there's, and, and from the technical side, uh, there's no real, you know, book or learning path. There, that's, you, you come into our world, you could be a world-class technician being a transmission guy. Mm-hmm. You could be a world-class technician being an engine guy. Uh, those are two very different technicians and they right. their, their their demeanors their personalities their mm. their, their detailed you know, attention to detail um i would say just giving the kids the basic knowledge which which is what we're trying to accomplish and seeing which which way they they start so if we've got someone who's interested in, in in the the front end or the suspension of a vehicle that's a very specialized part of our work and, mm. and, and, and what we offer a service we offer. So if someone, I would say if we, once we, we, we pin down what a child or a student likes, let's try to steer in that direction. Got it. And we've talked about this before, getting them with someone in our company. So even if it was an, an outside independent or they, they, they choose to leave town and go somewhere, um, they can kind of know what they're talking about when they go and visit with the interviewing manager and say, right. you know, I spent this time doing this. I was really interested in suspension or I, you know, I love doing brake work or, hey, I, I really want to know about body work. And, and I yeah. think just it, just empowering them to, to ask. Not, yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah, when, when we bring kids in, um, uh, yeah, and I say sense. kids, younger, usually yeah. younger guys, and, and we've had some, some young ladies as well, some really, really talented young sure. female technicians, which 
you know, you don't see that a lot, but right. But but very detail oriented process. A lot of times, girls do better. Mm. They, they just they do. Um, We've seen that in the welding profession. Yeah, like TIG welding. It's when it, yeah. the, the more more technical and detail oriented is that they they usually excel at that. Mm -hmm. So, I, I think empowering them to say, you know, I'm interested in this. Tell me more about it. I think as a hiring manager, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm I like knowing where someone's head's at. Yeah. You know, if you're like, hey, I just don't want to do this. I really like this. Then that gives me an opportunity to know that, hey, does our company fit with what your what mm -hmm. your goals are? Now they may change those goals as right. they're getting. Oh, wow, I really like that, mm -hmm. and that's fine. But I think it gives them because you know, just a young kid, I ended up in this business that we're now sponsoring with you. Right. Uh, the irony that yeah. I'm actually running the dealership yeah. that I was competing against a, 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 story, a long man. time ago. It's kind of a full circle. Full you know, circle. But yeah. I didn't know what to ask when I was talking to, sure. that, to that hiring manager. I knew that he was my my, my uh, good friend's father, but we never had a lot of dialogue about mm -hmm. the job. So I just said, I'm willing to learn, I guess. you know. Well, you know, it's interesting you say that because we've got three questions or we've got three principles that we teach our young men. You've got to get up. You got to show up and you got to speak up. Right. And, and that speak up a lot of times as a young man, you know, you know, I was always intimidated to open my mouth to ask the question. Right. I think everybody was. Yeah. And so, but it's like, man, if we can encourage these, these young people that we work with to say, look, don't be scared to speak up, at least communicate, have a dialogue between your employer and you or your crew chief, you know, let's uh, go ahead and, and, and ask questions. It's well, they're, okay. they're, they're already judging what it's going to take to manage you. Right. So show them what they're managing. There you go. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll do this. I'll do this. You know, I'm interested in this. You know, is, do, you, do you guys have a path? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and sometimes no is a good answer. Right. There we, you go. we don't have a path. Yeah, that's right. But guess what? This person does. Mm -hmm. Let me show you that direction. So I, can direct I think just building them that confidence just to, like you said, that, that's a great three principles. Because yeah, good. one that we didn't, I didn't, I wasn't taught coming through high school or even in college was to ask so. Yeah, good. Well, thank you so much, Neil. I know we're going to have you back and we want to talk about the legacy of Vaden, have Miss Jane back. We'd love to just kind of hear the story of Dan Vaden Chevrolet and its legacy. You know, we're excited to be partnered with y'all. And uh, listen, we would like uh, for you, if you're out watching, to uh, check us out on uh, our website at exceltoday.com. Learn more about Excel and our mentoring work. Learn more about our partnership with Dan Vaden Chevrolet here in Savannah and see really the impact that the automotive trailer is having in, in your community. Neil, thanks for being here with us on the Fueled with Purpose podcast. Thank you. Uh, you know, it's, it's great to hear about the work for of Dan Baden Chevrolet in our community and the impact that you're having on lives. I know uh, we're very blessed to uh, be in a partnership with you and Jane and her team uh, there uh, with Miss Laura. And uh, we're just grateful for your generosity and the support to help us launch the automotive trailer to start making a difference in the lives of young people in the community and then transitioning them to the workforce. So thank you for Absolutely. being willing to, to partner up with us, man. Well, you're and, uh, as always, we'd like to thank our title sponsor, Mark and Jenna Hall. We couldn't do it without uh, the generosity of Mark and Jenna to be able to tell the story of Excel and our mentoring work in the community. If you want to find out more information about Excel's mentoring work, go to our website at exceltoday.com. You can check out what we've got going on and the partnerships like we like Dan, with Dan Vaden Chevrolet and with other organizations in the community and how we're making a difference in the lives here in our community. Neil, thanks so much for being with us in the studio, buddy. Well, thank you for having me. It's been fun. Excel Strategies is a mentoring network that exists to empower young men with purpose and passion. We accomplish this through mentoring and training on topics such as goal setting, time management, relationships, health and fitness, financial stewardship, and so much more. To learn more about Excel strategies or how to support our work, you can visit us online at exceltoday.com.